Hello, welcome back. I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we are going to go through object-oriented programming in JavaScript. Object-oriented programming is something used in a lot of other different programming languages, uh, mainly Java and C Sharp, and it's all it's very useful for making sure we group data together correctly. So let's just go on to the first lesson. Create a basic JavaScript object. So an object is denoted by these braces, and there's other ways to create objects, but this is the most basic way. So for this challenge, we want to have a dog with name and numlink properties. Here we'll set our name to Leo and numlink to four and run it. Yep. Use dot notation to access the properties of an object. This is very simple. Just grab our object and do dot name or dot numlinks on it. Dog dot numlinks and run it. Yep. Create a method on an object. So we can actually have methods inside of the objects. Here we'll have a method called say legs, and it will return the sentence, this dog has four legs. So I'll just copy and paste it here, and that should work. Let's try it. Yep, make code more reusable with the this keyword. Here we want to change dog to this, because it's referring to the same thing. This is just referring to dog, so this and dog are interchangeable here. I used to be really confused about the this keyword, but it's actually very simple. Just don't overthink it. Let's try it. Yep. Define a constructor function. So a constructor function, I guess, looks like this. And we want to make one for the dog. So I'll just copy and paste this over, and I'll change the name to dog. And I think that's all I have to do. Let's try it. Yep. Use a constructor to create objects. So now we can use the new keyword to make an object of dog. So we'll set let hound equal to new dog. And now hound will have all the properties of dog here. So I'll just console log it quick. So yeah, now hound is an object that has a name, color, and numlegs. Let's run this. Yep. Extend constructors to receive arguments. Here we want to have arguments inside the dog function and we'll have it as name and color being passed. And then we'll set this dot name equal to the name and this dot color equal to the color. And we'll set this dot numlegs to four. And then now when we create this dog, let terrier equal new dog. We can pass in its name. We'll name him Leo. And we can pass in a color. We'll do brown. So now when I console log terrier, it's an object with a name, color, and numlegs, except Leo and brown were passed in to the constructor. So let's try that. Yep. Verify an object's constructor with instance of. Here we can see if it's, if it's an object that has a constructor, or that was constructed using a constructor by doing instance of on it. So for this challenge, we'll have a my house equal to a new house with four bedrooms, and we'll do my house instance of house. So there we have my house instance of house. I guess I don't have to console log it, so I'll just run it. Yep. Understand own properties. We just want to see what properties are inside of a an object. So for the challenge, we want to copy this for loop and then just change duck to canary and change duck to canary here as well. And I guess now we can console log own props. And there we get name and num legs down here. So that should work. Let's run it. Yep. Use prototype properties to reduce duplicate code. We can use dot prototype to add a property onto an object, and it basically adds that property onto all objects of that type. So for this challenge, we want to have dog dot numlegs or dog dot prototype dot numlegs equal to four. And now Beagle has Man, I was expecting Beagle to have numlegs property on it. Maybe it does, but it's just not showing up. I'll try running it. I mean, it works anyways, I guess. Iterate over all properties. So prototype properties are not the same as own properties. This is an own property and this is a prototype property. So when we call dot has own property, it can only find the own properties. For the challenge, we want to copy this and we want to change duck to beagle. So there it's finding name as an own prop and numlegs as a prototype prop. It should work, let's see. Yep. Understand the constructor property. You can call dot constructor on an object and it will find that object's constructor if it has one. So in this case, bird was used to construct dog or duck. And now duck dot constructor equals bird. For the challenge, we just want to copy this into the function here and return it when the candidate is a dog. So this will return true if it's a dog and false if it's not a dog. Let's try it. 
Yep. Change the prototype to a new object. I guess you can do dot prototype on it and set it as a new object. So for this challenge, we'll just copy this over here and that should work. And I guess you can do this dot name on it, even though name isn't in this prototype, it is in the constructor. So that's something. Let's run it. Yep. Remember to set the constructor property when changing the prototype. So by default, prototype doesn't carry on the constructor and we have to do that manually. So for this challenge, we'll have constructor of dog here. And now it knows that this prototype has constructor of dog. Let's try that. Yep. Understand where an object's prototype comes from. We can just do this to find that out. So I'll just copy this over and change this to dog. So we call the dog constructor dot prototype dot is prototype of beagle. And this will return true or false. In this case, it'll return true because dog is a prototype of beagle. Let's try it. Yep. Understand the prototype chain. This is where this stuff gets kind of confusing. So a prototype can have another prototype on top of it and then another prototype on top of that. So I think you can nest prototypes, which is kind of weird. But for this challenge, we want to do object.prototype. That is prototype of dog.prototype. And that will be true. And maybe you, we can do like another chain on top of that. But I'll just run this. Yep. Use inheritance so you don't repeat yourself. Inheritance is a really important concept in programming, at least object-oriented programming. And it's basically the concept of being able to share properties. So in this case, cat and bear are animals. So we can just have another object called animal that takes up all of the shared properties of bear and cat. In this case, bear and cat both eat. So we can just put that function inside the animal object. So we'll just take this eat function out and put it in the animal and delete this one. And that should be good to go. Let's try it out. Yep. Inherit behaviors from a super type. This is done with this line, object.create. So for the challenge, we'll do object.create on both of these because duck and beagle are animals. We can do this. And now they both have the eat function. Let's just run this. Yep. Set the child's prototype to an instance of the parent. So this is how we actually connect them together with this line of code here. We're saying that a bird is an instance of an animal. So in this case, we want to have dog be an instance of animal. And now dog will get the access to this eat function. Without this, it would just be this one. But now that dog.prototype has this animal as part of it, then it can access eat. Let's try it. Yep. Reset an inherited constructor property. So when we connected our two objects of bird and animal or dog and animal, then the constructor became animal instead of bird. And we don't want that. So we want to reset it to be the correct one. So for our challenge, we want to change this constructor and the dog one. So we want the dog constructor to be dog and not animal. Let's try that. Yep. Add methods after inheritance. We want to set custom methods unique to dogs and we're able to do that pretty easily. But for the challenge, we want to do pretty much everything that we learned in the last few lessons. So we're going to be starting by connecting dog to animal by doing this line dog dot prototype. So the dog object equals an instance of the animal object. And then we want to set its constructor to be dog. And then we want to add a bark method to the dog object. So dog.prototype.bark equals a function and we'll just console log bark. So now beagle, we can call bark on it and we can call eat on it. And I think that's about it. <laughs> let's run that. Oh, it should say wolf actually. And now let's run it. Yep. Override inherited methods. So right now we have a fly function that returns I am flying, but in the penguin object, we don't have a fly method. So it'll just be this one, but we can override that by adding it on. So just doing penguin.prototype.fly equals a function. And now we can return I am walking or I can't fly. So now if we had, let's say, a hawk here, then we probably won't add this fly function and we just take the default. But since we have a penguin, that's a bird, we can specify the fly function to say I can't fly instead of I am flying. So that's all we have to do for this one, I think. So let's try it. No, nope. it should return. Oh yeah, it should return this string instead. Alas, this is a flightless bird. 
Let's run that. Yep, there we go. Use a mixin to add common behavior between unrelated objects. In this case, bird and boat both glide, but we can't say that a bird is a boat or like a boat is a bird. We can't say that, but we can say they can both glide at least. So we want to make a mixin to handle that. So I'll just copy this code over here down to here and we'll change this to glide and a glide mixin and we'll change this to gliding and then we'll add this glide function to both boat and bird by calling it and then passing in our object so there we passed in both bird and boat to this glide mixin and now we can call boat.glide and it'll console log this so might as well do it bird.glide and there we go gliding whoosh let's try it yep Use closure to protect properties within an object from being modified externally. Here, if we called a new bird and called bird.weight on it, we could set it to a different weight, but we want to actually have it where we can't modify it. So in this case, we'll define it as let weight equals 15, and then we'll have a function of this dot get weight and it'll return the weight. I guess we have to do this dot get weight equals function. And now we can only get the weight, we can't set the weight. So let's try that. Yep. Understand the immediately invoked function expression or IIFE. It's just an anonymous function. So a function with no name that gets called immediately upon creation. And to do that, we have it around parentheses and then the two parentheses at the end to call it and get rid of make nest. And there it runs a cozy nest is ready, even though it wasn't, well, it actually is called, but it doesn't have a name that's being called. So let's run that. Yep. Use an IIFE to create a module. So a module is a group of mixins apparently that looks like this. So for the challenge, we want to copy this over here and we want to change the glide mixin to an is cute mixin and the fly mixin we want to change to a sing mixin and then we can get well it'll return true for this one and it will console log singing to an awesome tune and then we can delete this part and we also want to name it fun module so here's the example of how you would use that you would call your fun module and then you'd call one of these functions so is cute mixin and then you'd pass your object into it and then it would append that function onto that object so let's try running this yep and there we go we completed object oriented programming for javascript on free code camp there is a lot of function stuff in this one i was expecting a lot more class-based object oriented programming but function based is kind of cool as well next up we're going to do functional programming challenges and that should be quite a lot of fun if I do say so myself. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.